Good morning, good morning, St. Luke. Welcome to worship. We're glad that you're here this morning. Good to see you. Just have a few announcements I want to send your way before we uh, enter into worship this morning. Number one, I just want to say thank you to uh, the many of you who turned out for our conversation and information sessions this week uh, with both the district superintendent last Sunday and then the bishop this Wednesday. Uh, your attendance and support has appreciated the spirit in which uh, questions were asked and so forth was very encouraging. So thank you for doing that. Uh, quick reminder, uh, immediately following the children's sermon, because of the construction going on upstairs, the kids are going to be going across the street, okay? So parents, be aware of that, that after the children's message, they'll be going across the street instead of upstairs because of the construction. You'll notice in your bulletin there's an insert for called St. Luke Praise, and Amy Ward has done an excellent job of putting this together. February 23rd and 24th, we're going to have a 24-hour prayer vigil, and we encourage you, there's a place where you can sign up online, and uh, we feel confident that we'll have every hour that 24 hours covered, but even if uh, that particular time slot that you're interested in is taken online, you can pray anytime. You can pray from your home. You can pray as a small group, a Sunday school class, uh, a ladies circle, however you want to do it. You can do it from the house. You can come walk the property. That day, however, um, at least till seven o'clock that evening, security will be here. So if you want to go to the prayer chapel and pray that way, you can do so. But we'll talk more about that um, in the next week or so, but we wanted to get that out there, get that in front of you, put that on your calendar, um, because this is an important part, as prayer should always be an important part of any decision of consequence that we make, and we have some decisions we have to make as a church, family, and so we want to bathe that in prayer. Um, I mentioned last week that uh, Chuck Bolton and I are trying to uh, find volunteers who are willing to serve as part of our greeter team. But also, in addition to that, if, if you would be willing to usher as well, or either or or both, we would very much like to have your name as well because we have a very faithful, dedicated group of ushers. But we would also like to expand that and to have some teams of people. So the burden on any one given Sunday or any one given month doesn't fall on the same people again and again. So we have a wonderful uh, group who attend this worship service, and this is a wonderful way to serve in a way that matters. Uh, so we encourage you to prayerfully consider that and get in touch with Chuck or myself. And then finally, uh, and, and we don't want to belabor anything, but we want to be as transparent and as open as possible. So there will be another... Uh, information session Thad will be doing this Wednesday at 6.15. So if you haven't been able to make it to anything thus far, um, this will be an opportunity to, to come in here and ask any questions, residual questions that you may have. So we encourage you, if you haven't, to, to come be a part of that. And so I just want to say thank you for the spirit in which you have gone about this. And thank you for uh, your prayers and support that I know that you've given and now, let us prepare our hearts for worship. If you want to St. Luke, you can go ahead and stand up and join us in worship this morning. We're so happy that every single one of you is here.
our struggle. We are not without pain, but we're not without power. For there's power in His name. We are not without failure. We are not without fall, but His mercy flows freely. That's the grace of the Lord. We are not without grieving. We are not without loss, but we're not without victory. The victory is won. one name above all other names, and that is Jesus. He's sitting on the throne of glory this morning. Oh, 
may be seated. I'd like to ask the children to come forward, please. sporting event going on tonight. Does anyone know what it is? Football. What is it? Okay, it's good. The Super Bowl. Who are you rooting for? The Chiefs. Who's rooting for the Chiefs? Raise your hand. Okay, Eagles, raise your hand. All right, and some of you don't care, right? Is your team somebody else? Who's your team? Auburn. We have Georgia fans. Auburn's not playing tonight. <laughs> We got some Georgia fans in here too? Right, right. So regardless of what team you root for, whether it's Auburn or the Eagles or the Chiefs, it is Luke's. It's my son's jersey. We're Eagles fans. So regardless of what team you root for, there's a way we can think about our team and our church family. We're all a part of God's team. If you have accepted Jesus into your heart, then you are a part of God's team. And God is like our coach, and it's his game. He created the game, and he's going to win. And he gave us a playbook. So we've got all the plays in here that we need, and God designed it so every play is a play that will show us what's best for us and show us how much he loves us and show us how great he is. And all this month, the play we've been focusing on is... How to Treat Others with Love, Kindness, and Respect. And that comes from Luke. Who knows the golden rule, our verse for the month. Just shout it out. Go ahead. As you would have them do to you. That's right. Thank you, Evie. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's our play for the month. All right, let's, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for being such a wonderful, awesome God. Thank you for your playbook, the Bible. God, we ask you to please forgive us when we don't follow your rules, Lord, and please help us to do better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Parents, this is for you. Today, due to construction upstairs, we are going across the street to Turner Chapel. So I would love to have a couple dads or moms help us cross the street safely with security. I would appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, dads. Appreciate your willingness to help with that, and thank you all for your flexibility. Uh, as we prepare to receive the offering, I just want to ask, and I didn't do this during announcements, but I did want to just ask for a quick uh, moment of privilege to, to have you all be in prayer for our confirmation class today. We're going to have what um, Brett uh, came to call a day apart uh, from 12 to 3 this afternoon, and so it'll be a time where uh, the students will learn about some of the things that happen in the church, some of the symbols of the church, uh, why we have different colors that appear throughout the church at different seasons, all that sort of thing. Um, but I think one of the best things that will come out of this is this will be an opportunity for the mentors and the confirmands to spend time together, which is one of the reasons we have... Uh, these mentor sponsors is so that our students can have an adult that they can uh, form a bond with, that they can ask questions of, that they can learn from and glean wisdom from. And I have used different models of confirmation in the past, and I really love this model of having one-on-one -on -one 
mentorship, and I appreciate the so many of you who were willing to do it. There wasn't a single person that I, who I asked to be sponsored that said no. And I actually had extras kind of waiting in the wings that we had more students kind of join. So I just want to say how much I appreciate that. Um, for the new guy, that means more than you know. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and so at this time, I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward. And as I lead us in prayer, I think it, it would be appropriate um, because we are finishing the sermon series on the Lord's Prayer uh, today that then I'll, I'll say us a prayer and, and then I'll invite us to join. I'll say something like, you know, I pray this in Jesus' name who taught us to pray, uh, our Father who art in heaven. So we're going to close this time of prayer together with saying the Lord's Prayer, and I think that's fitting that we do. So if you would, bow your heads. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is moving throughout campuses in this country, even as we speak, Lord. That there is a Holy Spirit revival that is going on. And Lord, it is our prayer and it is the desire of our heart each and every Sunday, although we may not always say it out loud, but Lord, today we will say, come Holy Spirit, come. Have your way in our hearts, in our lives. Lord, move us toward you, move us toward the cross. Help us to be in your presence and to not want to leave anytime soon. Lord, help us to just be present. For our minds and hearts to be focused on you because we worship you. You are the audience of one. We thank you now for these gifts we are about to receive. We thank you for the ministry that they will be used for and for the lives that will be changed because of it. And we ask all this in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Some worship this morning. Welcome. Glad to see all of you this morning. Uh, good crowd. I was afraid we might have a lower crowd today because of a holiday weekend, but good crowd. Glad, glad you're here. Uh, if you're visiting with us, we certainly welcome you to St. Luke. We hope you feel a warm welcome here, and we want you to know that you are welcome here at all times, and we want you to come back and keep coming. Uh, we've been working through a series on the Lord's Prayer, and today we're culminating that series. Uh, finishing that out. So again, we turn to Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter 9, verses, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. And this is in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he's talking to them about how to pray. And so Jesus says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is God's word for us today, so let's pray. God, thank you so much for your holy and living word. Thank you for the privilege of holding your word in our hands and opening your word and having it speak to our hearts and our minds and our souls. God, there is nothing that can replace your holy word. Thank you for its power to speak directly into our lives even today. And I pray once again that as we open your word together, that your Holy Spirit would pour down upon us to bring this word to life and reality in our lives so that we might live it out. And we ask this in Jesus' holy name. What a powerful name it is. Amen. Well, two dogs and a cat found themselves before the throne of God. So God, seated on his throne, said to the first dog, Welcome to my kingdom. What did you do on earth? The dog approached the throne of God, and the dog said, Well, I was a seeing-eye dog, and I actually saved my master from getting hit by a car. And God said, Well, please come and sit at my right. The second dog approached the throne of God, and God said, Welcome to my kingdom. What did you do on earth? And the dog said, Well, I was a military dog, and I actually got shot in action, saving my master. And God said, well, please come and sit at my left. The cat approached the throne, and God said, welcome to my king. And before he could even finish, the cat interrupted him and said, I believe you're in my seat. (laughs) Hopefully, we would not ever be as bold as that cat. But the reality is... Sometimes we slip into the mindset that mine is the kingdom and mine is the power and mine is the glory. And so that's why Jesus teaches his disciples to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Turn us away from the evil one. Turn us away from the one who would have us to believe that it's all about us. Turn us away from the evil one who would have us to believe that we can do anything under our own power. Turn us away from the evil one who would lead us to believe that ours is the glory, that we deserve the praise. God created it all. God spoke it all into being. And God is the only one who can oversee it all. But sometimes we slip into that thinking that it's all because of us. That we have done something to deserve glory and power and strength. We saw that last week as we talked about lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. We talked about the fact that Jesus, of course, was tempted by Satan and one of the great temptations of Satan was, Jesus, if you will just bow down to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. I'll give you power and glory. But of course, Jesus was able to say to Satan, Satan, you have no power here. All power belongs to God. And he quoted scripture to Satan, and the Bible tells us that the devil left him at that point. The evil one has no power in the presence of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus teaches us to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, deliver us from the evil one. Why? Because thine is the kingdom, and thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, you probably noticed that our scripture passage that we've been reading ends off with deliver us from the evil one. It doesn't contain for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And people often ask about that. Why is that not in the Lord's Prayer in the Bible? Well, scholars tell us that the earliest manuscripts did not contain that last line. The earliest manuscripts did leave off with, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's where the prayer stopped. 
the early church added that final line, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The early church added that final line as a doxology or a culmination of praise for the Lord's Prayer because it really sums up what the Lord's Prayer is all about. And they took it from 1 Chronicles 29, verses 11 through 13. 1 Chronicles 29, 11 through 13. We read there that King David was praising God for the generosity of the people who had given so graciously to help build the temple. And so King David was giving all praise to God. And in 1 Chronicles 29, King David says, Yours, O Lord, is the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. All that is in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted above all else. So that's where the line comes from. The early church took that scripture and added it to the Lord's Prayer as we know it today. But isn't that so powerful to hear an earthly king humbling himself before God? Isn't that so powerful to hear an earthly king saying, it's not about me, it's all yours, God. Yours is the kingdom, I am merely your servant. Yours is the power, I have no power without you, God. Yours is the glory, I don't deserve any glory, but it's all for you, almighty God. Isn't that powerful to hear an earthly king bowing before the throne of God, acknowledging where his power and his strength and his kingship comes from. So in 1886, uh, a group of wealthy millionaires at that time got together and purchased what we now know as Jekyll Island. And of course, if you've ever been to Jekyll Island, you can visit the Millionaire's Village. So These were families, wealthy families at that time. Goodyear, Rockefeller, Pulitzer, Morgan. All of these wealthy millionaires got together, purchased Jekyll Island, and formed what they called the Millionaire's Club, the Millionaire's Village. And at that time, these wealthy families controlled one-sixth of the world's wealth. One-sixth. These families had power. They controlled the railroads, they controlled banking, they controlled industry. They had tentacles in all kinds of income and power and, and work in the world. And so to get to, uh, individually, they formed their own empires. Collectively, they formed a kingdom. And we know it as the Millionaire's Club. Well, all those millionaires have one thing in common. They're all gone. They're all dead. And the millionaire's village sat in ruin for many years. Now we can go. It's been refurbished. We can go and tour it and and experience it. But it sat in ruin for many years. Chipped paint, sagging roofs, broken glass, vines growing up the side. All as a symbol that our earthly kingdoms cannot last. Our earthly kingdoms are only temporal. They cannot stand forever. We can gain power, we can gain wealth, and that's great for a little while, but it cannot get us into eternal glory. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I was happy to find, I did find a quote by J.D. Rockefeller. He's quoted as saying, I never would have been able to tithe the first million dollars I ever made if I had not tithed my first salary, which was $1.50 per week. Also, uh, Mr. Kraft of Kraft Cheese Corporation, he's quoted as saying, the only investment I ever made which has paid consistently increasing dividends is the money that I have given to the Lord. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But even Jesus said, Not my will, but yours be done, O Lord. 
Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, even he bowed down before the heavenly Father and said, Yours is the kingdom. Let your will be done. And so it's a call for all of us to fall to our knees. It's a call for all of us to humbly surrender before God and to acknowledge that we can do nothing apart from our Heavenly Father. We can do nothing under our own power. We can do nothing under our own strength. And if we start to accept the glory, Jesus says, that's all the glory you're going to get. You'll never be in the glory of heaven. And so it's a call for us to humbly surrender ourselves before God. I've seen a powerful thing unfolding on social media this week, at least on my news feed. I don't know if yours has been the same way, but let's see if this is the case. Powerful example of what we're talking about today. On the one hand, my news feed on social media this week has been flooded with images from last Sunday night's Grammy Awards. Did y'all see the Grammy Awards? I didn't watch the Grammy Awards, but I heard all about it. And my news feed has been flooded with images of Sam Smith, who is a modern singer, modern artist, won Song of the Year, I believe. But my news media has been flooded with images of Sam Smith rising up out of the stage at the Grammys in full devil costume. Full red regal robe, blood red eyes, devil horns, and a crown, a red crown on his head rising up out of the stage as Satan. And the audience at the Grammys apparently were given devil horns that lit up. And so everybody in the audience had the opportunity to put on their devil horns and dance around as they lit up as he rose up out of the stage as Satan. Now what's interesting about that to me is the audience didn't know that was going to be given to them as they walked in. And so every audience member had to make a decision to participate in that or not. Every audience member had the opportunity to put on those devil horns and participate or not. Very disturbing, infuriating imagery of our modern world. Satan worship, it's mighty close to it. It may not even be close. It might be in your face, Satan worship. Now, juxtapose that with images of a worship service at Asbury College in Wilmore, Kentucky. A worship service started last Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. at Asbury University, their weekly chapel service. Students and faculty came for their weekly chapel service, and that worship service is still going as we speak still going today and it has grown so strong that it's now standing room only in their chapel. The chapel service was supposed to go from 10 to 11 a.m. Wednesday morning and as the service ended students didn't want to leave and so the band continued to play. Students began to flood the altar. People began to kneel down in prayer. People gave their lives to Christ Confessions were made, sins were forgiven, and revival broke out at Asbury University. So much so that, as I said, the worship continues to this very moment, and busloads of students have come from other colleges because the Spirit of God is on the move at Asbury University. Again, nobody forced that. Nobody said, you've got to stay when the service was over. Nobody said, You can't leave. People made the choice to stay and continue to worship Almighty God. And revival has broken out. So the point is this. The kingdom of God has come to the earth. The the whole point of the Sermon on the Mount was to tell people the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is here. But we have the choice whether to participate in what God is doing. We have the choice to enter into kingdom work or to deny Jesus Christ and all that is happening and turn toward the evil one. 
Jesus says, you have no power here, Satan. God has all the power and the glory. And he teaches us to pray, for thine is the kingdom, and thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. So in the uh, Great Awakening in the 1800s, Jonathan Edwards says this, God has had it on his heart from eternity to glorify his dear and only begotten Son. And there are some special seasons where God appoints to that end, where God comes forth with omnipotent power. There are times of remarkable pouring out of God's Holy Spirit for the purpose of advancing God's kingdom. That's a beautiful definition of revival. God has appointed times and places that his Holy Spirit will pour out and give all power and all wisdom and all knowledge, and we can choose to be a part of that or not. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. But the call is for us to bow in humble surrender. There's a beautiful song called I Surrender by Hillsong Worship. The lyrics say this, here I am. Down on my knees again, surrendering everything. And I find, find me here, Lord, as you draw me near. Desperate for you, I surrender. Drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold. I hunger and I thirst with arms stretched wide. I know you hear my cry. Speak to me now, Lord, I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender everything. Like a rushing wind, Jesus, breathe within. Lord, have your way in me. I want to know you more. That's the beautiful attitude of surrender before Almighty God. I want to know you more, God. I want to know everything about you. I want to be in full surrender to you. I don't want to live under my own power anymore. I don't want to receive any glory for anything I've done. God, I give it all to you because yours is the kingdom and yours is the power and yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we're going to offer a 24-hour prayer vigil for our church congregation. I hope you've already gotten information about that. Two weeks from now, or a week and a half from now, on Wednesday, February 22nd, Wednesday, February 22nd, is called Ash Wednesday. And on Ash Wednesday, we'll have a worship service that night over in the sanctuary, I think at 6.30 that night, maybe 7, on that Wednesday night, February 22nd, Ash Wednesday. That's the service. It's a very traditional somber service where we put the ashes on your forehead in the sign of a cross. And that's a call to repentance and fasting. It's a call for the people of God to humble themselves and open ourselves up to the movement of God's Spirit. And so that's on Wednesday night, February the 22nd. Starting at 7 a.m. Thursday morning, the 23rd, we're going to offer a 24-hour prayer vigil. And I want to have somebody praying for a, a whole entire 24 hours. You don't have to pray the entire 24 hours, but we've got to sign up online where you can sign up for an hour at a time. And we want to make sure that every hour of that 24-hour prayer vigil is covered. And of course, multiple people can pray at any given time, but we just want to make sure that every hour is covered. So that's the point of the sign-up. But let this be a call to us as the family of God to humble ourselves before God. To open ourselves up and to say, God, we're nothing without you. God, we can't do anything without you. We can't move forward without you. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. So God, we humble ourselves before you as your hungry children seeking your wisdom seeking your grace seeking your guidance this is an amazing church and we've got a lot to be proud of about our church we really do but we must remember that we are nothing nothing without our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ 
And so I call us to a season of prayer. I call us to a time of prayer and fasting. Maybe give up your lunch hour. Maybe give up your supper hour, your breakfast, or whatever. If you work the night shift, take one of those middle of the night times. We'll have the chapel open and the prayer room open all day on Thursday. And if somebody would really like to be here during the night, we can make that happen as well. But it'll officially be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Thursday. So you can pray at the chapel or you can pray from anywhere that you are. We've got a prayer guide that Amy Ward has done. Let us bow before the Lord and humble ourselves to give God the power and the glory for this is His kingdom. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray. God, we acknowledge today that we are nothing without you. God, we humble ourselves and fall to our knees. We surrender everything. Lord, we lay our church at your feet. We invite your Holy Spirit to be our guide. We invite your Holy Spirit to move among us. We invite your Holy Spirit to bring revival in our church, Lord. May we find ourselves in a season of excitement and confession, praising God, giving our lives fully to you. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our altar is open, so if you'd like to come and pray, please feel free to do that. But let us be in an attitude of worship and prayer as we close together. Please stand. Reigning in majesty.
excited this morning Terry and Angie Hooper you've seen them around a whole lot they've been around a long time uh, but they're coming today to officially unite with our church Terry uh, accepted Christ in 2013 and was baptized here in 2018 and today they're coming to officially join our church family and so I ask you as you stand here before the congregation do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior accept the power and the freedom that he gives and the forgiveness that he gives. You live for him all your days. Praise God for that. And now, will you live for Christ through St. Luke Church and support this church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Will you do that? Praise God. All right, if you, church family, will pledge your support for them and repeat after me, with God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that Terry and Angie, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Great. Let me close this out in prayer. God, I thank you so much for your presence here today. I thank you for Terry and Angie and for their excitement in coming to officially join our church. God, they have already given them themselves for many years right here in love and service. And I thank you and praise you that they're planning to do that for many, many more. God, help us to be the church that you need us to be for them. Help us all to join together in our work for you. And as we go now, Father, we go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray for God's blessing on each one here today and forevermore. Amen. Go in God's peace. Come and greet Terry and Angie. All right. All right.